Giants fans? What's up, pub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Insta followers? It's your boy No Name back at it again with Giants Talk. This time on the episode, we got a Giants prediction, like the schedule prediction. It's a bit early considering that the season is what, three, four months away? But after we already covered the draft, after we already covered most of uh, the major moves in free agency, I was like, I feel comfortable doing a video on this. Uh, I never really talked about the schedule that we got once it came out either way. I was like, hey, this would be a nice time to do some type of prediction video. And then um, during OTAs during the summer, I'll probably come out with another one and then a final one during the preseason, like one week before the season starts. So with that being said, Let's hop right into it. Week one, we have the Giants opening at Jerry World versus the Dallas Cowboys. It's almost like a tradition for the past four or five years now that the NFL has the New York Giants going up, going up against Dallas week one in their own house. And it's also almost like a tradition that we almost never win this. The only time I could recall in recent memory that we actually won at Dallas week one was in 2016 the year we had our uh, wild card playoff run and we lost to Aaron Rodgers, but let's not talk about that. Uh, I do have us losing here, um, week one here. I do have us opening up to the Cowboys, our offense struggling a bit and our defense struggling a lot. I have a feeling it's going to be very similar to last year's performance at Jerry World, just because the team, um, while I do think we're going to be a lot better than people expect us to be, we still have a ways to go and we're still going to struggle a little bit in the beginning of the season. Not to mention that at this point in the season, I think Dallas has the better the better team. Uh, they got uh, an offense that actually, I think we have a better offense. Uh, I think Saquon is better than Zeke. That is completely up for debate, up to y'all. I do think that Dak is better than Eli at this point in their careers. Uh, while I, uh, Eli does have a better um, deep ball, most certainly he does. Dak is a very much a dink and dunk quarterback. We have the better receivers overall versus them. The only good receiver they have is Cooper, maybe Michael Gallup. I don't know. You could throw it out there. With the signing of Devontae Adams, too, maybe him. But I think we just have the better offense overall. Overall, it's going to come down to defense, which they certainly had the edge. So week two at home, we have the Buffalo Bills. This, for me, is an easy W. While the Bills did have a spectacular draft, they got... Bills, they got um, Ed Oliver in the first round and somehow still snagged Jawan Taylor in the second round. And just off of that alone, they addressed two of their biggest needs. I think they're going to be a good team next year, but I don't think they're going to be a better team than us at the beginning of the season. So that's a W for us. Week three at the Buccaneers, we got uh, Jameis Winston and now coming out of retirement, Bruce Arians. This guy probably one of the best offensive masterminds in the history of the NFL. Just a quick note, if he can't fix Jameis, then nobody can fix Jameis. Like, I honestly thought the Bucks would have already given up on him by this point. Like, I really thought they would either let him go or not bring him back. I, I didn't expect him to be the quarterback for them going into 2019, if you asked me a couple months ago or not. With that being said, I still think this is a W. I think we have a better team. Their defense is really coming on strong, but I see this as a W for us. Week four at Washington. Washington is uh, unfortunately one of my sleeper th teams. I really think a lot of people underestimate the strength of this Washington Redskins team when they're healthy. And when they were healthy last year, they were dominating the NFC East. They were like six and two or something like that before Alex Smith went down. Uh, so I, I really don't see any reason for them to just drop off a cliff unless the injuries to each player that was injured was really uh, extremely serious and it affects them into this season. I don't. I don't see a reason for them to uh, come back and be bad. So I have us losing to the Redskins here, our first uh, or second loss in the division. And to end off the first four weeks, the Giants are 2-2. Two and two. Heading into week five, we have the Vikings visiting us. One team that I expect to have a bounce back season. While there's no moves that come off the top of my head they did to improve their offensive line, I do expect their defense to come back strong. Just two years ago, it was a record-setting defense. Last year, it was average, but still, you know, gracing that uh, top 10. Not only that, with Kirk Cousins now in a 
in a, in the scheme now. He's been in for about a year now, and he's gotten used to his receivers and whatnot. I expect him to perform better. So I have us losing to the Vikings here. Not really a surprise for me. The uh, NFC North in general is just a strong division, and you guys will see how we perform against them later on here. <laughs> Going into week six at the Patriots, I believe this is a prime time game, 8.30. I have us winning, and if you were a longtime Giants fan, you, you should not be surprised because it's not just, uh, it's like a meme and a joke that yeah, Eli plays different when he plays against Tom Brady in the Super Bowls, but during the regular season also, we've seen him take it to another level, like, like Goku going Super Saiyan Blue or something. Like This guy plays, he has like three tiers of playing. There's regular season Eli, playoff Eli that everybody jokes about but one one part of him that everybody forgets about is when he plays the GOAT when he plays Tom Brady he activates that GOAT Slayer mode and he really like this dude really throws out of his mind when playing against Tom Brady and I don't know why look at every regular season game that we played against him with Eli at our quarterback position and you see he would give the Patriots defense absolute hell during those games so I have us winning this not to mention you throw in the fact that the Patriots usually start out slow at the beginning of their season it also goes in our favor. Week 7, we have the Cardinals at home. This is another W for us. Arizona, a lot of people think they had a really good draft. Some people went as far to say that they had the best draft out of all the NFL teams. I think they had an alright draft, but um, I can't. I don't think they really improved that their team that much because as far as offensive line issues go, I still see them heading into the season with the same offensive line is issues that they had last year. Um, they didn't really address it in the way they needed to address it. They had one of the worst O-lines in the league. I can see Kyler Murray getting absolutely pummeled his rookie year. They have a lot of receiver depth, yes, but it's not as though all those guys are going to be on the field at the same time. I just think that they went after skill position a little too much in this past draft right here. I have us winning against them. Week 8 at the Lions. This is another L against the NFC North team. I know, I know, we're, we're losing against them, but... Tradition, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, one of the Giants' tradition is opening up against Dallas and losing them, losing against them. Another tradition is that we always have a weird game that we somehow lose. Like, like I like to call these like the Eli Manning games. And I say that because we play amazing in the first half, the offense is clicking in the first half, but for some reason it just dies in the second half. Or maybe it's the defense that just gives up on us in the second half and we inexplicably lose. The past couple of years, we actually had like two last year. It was the Carolina Panthers game with that long field goal and the um, the second Philadelphia game where we were absolutely crushing them. And I don't know if Pat Schirmer had a stroke or something, but the offense died in the second half. And then the year before that, it was the Jake Elliott field goal game. So I think this is going to be that game. Like, honestly, we have one every year. At this point, it's really become fact more than a uh, urban legend. So um, at the end of our first half of the season, we're four and four which is already better than a lot of people expect us to be. Heading into week nine, we have Dallas at home. This is a W. I do think we're gonna split the series with Dallas. I don't see them coming into our house uh, at this point where we have a little bit of momentum because like I said, we're better than people think. Um, I think at this point, we'll probably be second or third in the NFC East, honestly. And so we'll pose a real challenge to them. Our team is clicking more now than it did in the first week. By now, our offense should be all figured out. Our defense should be coming along. And I think we could get the win there. Week 10, we're at the Jets. And I put quotation marks when I said it at the Jets because this is really just a home game. We're not going anywhere. It's still at MetLife. And no matter how bad the Giants are and how good the Jets might be, we always win the Snoopy Bowl. I'm sorry if there's any Jets fans out there watching this right now, but I mean, we're not even the most dysfunctional team in New York anymore. At least uh, I don't think we are since the Jets fired their general manager after the draft. A stupid decision in my opinion. Why would you let the guy come in, draft his guys, and then fire him instead of firing him before so you could draft the guys you want? I don't know, man. The Jets always find a way to be second banana to the Giants. That's just my opinion. Week 11, we're at our bye. We're at our late bye, and we're 6-4. and four. Once again, a lot better than people thought we were. And I just think the team is going to have a lot of good energy in that bye week. We're going to come out. We're going to be feeling nice. We're going to be feeling a bit cocky, all that. And we're going to come out and lose to the Bears. <laughs> I know, I kind of built them up, but I think we're going to lose to the Bears for two reasons. One, this defense was already amazing last year. But I think this year, Khalil Mack and the crew, they're going to step it up to try and get this team all the way back into the playoffs and hope in their hopes to the Super Bowl. And I also think they're going to try and get a little bit of revenge for last year's Bears game. 
which I actually attended. I was lucky enough to attend that Bears game, and it was the best football experience I have had in my life. It went, not only was it a win, but it was a win in overtime. We really stole the game from the Bears that, I think it was what, it might have been like week 10? No, 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 like week 14 or something like that. Maybe even week 12, I can't remember, but it was like, it wasn't the latter half of the season, that's for sure. And we definitely stole the game from it more so than we won the game because they really tried to make a comeback last year. Now, week 13, we got our first win against the NFC North. That's right, I have us beating the Green Bay Packers at home. I don't know why, I just have a feeling that we're going to beat the Packers. You can call this one a loss if you want to. I just think that there's going to be one game similar to last year where we we just go out there and we stun everybody and we take a game from a team that we were not supposed to win it happens every year i think that's going to be the packers this year but i also think we just have a better offense yes call me crazy aaron Rodgers is probably the best quarterback in the league but the quarterback himself we've seen i mean we've seen Rodgers carry this green bay team like every single year that he's played on it but he can't do that for every single game, and I think this is one of those games we catch him off guard. People are going to underestimate us a bit, especially coming off of a loss. So going into week 14, we are 7-5, and five, once again way above everybody else's expectations. In fact, we might even be first in the NFC East with this record at this point in the season. If not first, most definitely second. Because the way the NFC East plays out is that it's always it's always a dog fight. It's always a scrappy fight between all the four teams there. So we're going to be first or second in the East with this record. Now going into week 14, it's another traditional game at Philadelphia. I was kind of, I looked, when I originally looked at the schedule, I was kind of um, spaced out when I saw that we had Philly just two weeks apart. Like both of the Philly games, I was like, that, that doesn't really make any sense to me, but I guess... So we're obviously going to lose here, and I say obviously because the Giants just can't seem to beat the Eagles for like the better, path, the better part of the past 10 years, especially at home. And I keep thinking back to last year where we really could have beaten them. Saquon really destroyed the Eagles by himself in the first half, and then Pat Sherman doesn't really use them in the second half, and the passing game doesn't click in the second half, and we just lose after dominating them in the first so I don't know what it's going to be this way at Philly this year, but I just see us losing there at Philadelphia. Week 15, we have Miami at home. That is an easy win for us because the, even the Dolphins don't know if they want to tank or if they want to actually play for a spot this year. They got Josh Rosen, so there is a reason for them not to tank. Uh, they don't necessarily need to uh, lose their games to get Tua or to get Justin Herbert or one of these quarterbacks coming out in 2020. But at the same time, they've let go of a lot of their key pieces on both offense and defense. The team is really a skeleton of what it used to be. So even if they were trying to win, they would have a very hard time doing so. I just see it as an easy win for us. Week 16 at Washington, we split with the Redskins. I think we go in there and we take a W, especially because I have a feeling by that this point, Dwayne Haskins will be performing as their starting quarterback. And I don't see us losing to a rookie QB that uh, wanted to be on our team and has an attitude problem with it. And he's going to try it. Or he's going to be all emotional, come out and try to win. I just don't see us losing to a rookie quarterback of his caliber. Um, I don't see us losing to the Washington team, even though I said a lot of people underestimate them. I don't see us getting swept by them. Uh, that's really all I have to say about it. Landon Collin, will, he'll have his laugh at the beginning of the season. We'll have our laugh at the end. Week 17, Philadelphia at home. The last game that could quite possibly decide the fate of the NFC East and who, who goes in as, the, um, as our division. Is it division? Yeah, as our division champs. And this right here is a coin flip. We, I really don't know if we're going to win this, and I really don't know if we do lose this. I wouldn't be surprised if the one team we get swept by this year is Philadelphia because they've been the team consistently doing it to us for like the past 10 years. But I wouldn't be surprised if we pulled out and the team really fought hard and got a win. So the way it's looking right, looking like right now is that if we lose to Philly, we'll have a 9-7 and record. If we win, we'll have a 10-6 and record, which would then put us at either first or second place in the east in my opinion so i'm gonna i'm gonna put that really up there as a coin flip because i'm a giants fan what you guys are gonna see on the screen is a on the screen is a 10 and 6 record because that's just the team i support and i really think they could achieve this rec this record because they have a last place schedule 
if you don't know how that works is basically because they got last place in the nfc east the previous year they will have the easiest schedule out of all their teams in the nfc East. so that works in our favor and it's definitely doable with this squad when the schedule first came out i was like we could go like seven and nine and then after draft and free agency i don't i don't really see us going below eight and eight and i could be completely wrong about this of course i can but 10 and 6 is definitely possible 10 and 6 whether it's a wild card spot or whether it's a buy 9 and 7 definitely possible so that's my predictions for y'all let me know what you all think is this realistic is this possible do you think this giants team could go to the playoffs this year if so why if not also why let me know leave your thoughts down below i'm out you're